Well, let's move on to focus on the power space. Now, the draft national electricity plan by the government expects annual addition of close to around 40 gigawatts of renewable energy. Now, India could also see its PLFs, that is the plant loading factors rising to around 75% by FY28 to FY30. So how could this play out for the power players? Well, we have with us Subhadeep uh, Mitra, uh, the executive director at uh, Nuvama, who joins us. Hi, Subhadeep. Thanks so much uh, for joining. And well, how do you see this play out? Uh, you know, give us uh, your quick takeaways. Thanks. Uh, good morning, and thank you for having me on the show. Uh, so I think the premise uh, for having this report was largely to look at uh, the scenario that uh, the draft national electricity policy talks about, where we look at uh, you know, uh, potentially adding anywhere between 40 to 50 uh, gigawatts of renewable energy annually. Uh, now, uh, if, if we look at uh, that scenario where we're adding such a large quantum of capacities, and then this compares with maybe only about 12 to 15 gigawatts of capacity that we have done so far uh, on an annual basis in renewable energy, uh, you would probably see thermal PLFs uh, still remaining somewhere in the 60-65% range uh, going ahead. Now, having said that, uh, we also have to bear in mind that for a, such a quick ramp up of, you know, three to four X of what we have done in the past, uh, to do that in future, you naturally need the entire value chain to step up, uh, which includes the domestic manufacturing and, and other things. Uh, so we look at a scenario that, okay, what if we end up adding maybe only 15 gigawatts of renewable energy, uh, possibly over the next two to three years? How does that change the scenario? So while plans are clearly uh, put out there, in a bare case scenario where there are slippages and we end up putting up only 15 gigawatts of annual renewable energy capacity, you would essentially see the thermal uh, PLFs moving up higher than the 75% threshold. Now, typically in the past, what we have seen is over the last 10, 12 years, thermal PLFs uh, have never gone beyond a 71% on an all India average basis. This is largely because even if you look at an FI12 scenario, uh, where India was in base power deficit, while the efficient plants may be operating at close to 90%, many of the state discount plants, which are not as efficient, were probably operating somewhere closer to the 60-65% level, which is the reason you're seeing the overall India average sticking around the 70-71%. So our take is that, uh, you know, adding a 40-50 gigawatt of annual renewable energy is not a choice, but a necessity. Uh, because without that, we are at the risk of hitting base deficits, possibly by anywhere between FI28 to FI30. Okay. And uh, so, Subhadeep, uh, got it. Got, we got it. Uh, so let's take talk about individual stocks, you know, because I think that's where the real interest lies. Um, on NTPC, you have a buy. Now, if you look at the last three years' performance, right, NTPC has done quite a bit, uh, but perhaps not as much as one would have expected given all the triggers that we have. I mean, three years back, NTPC was about sub-100. Now it's about 170 rupees on the stock price. Do you see a big re-rating for this stock? And if yes, what could the triggers be? Of course. So I think I'll just uh, drill down from the conclusions that I have from my sectoral take. Uh, and, and that's la largely to look at, we, we basically come to three broad conclusions. One, we are going to look at a lot more tendering activity that's going to happen on, in the renewable space which essentially means the likes of, uh, let's say, an NTPC or a Tata Park, which have very large plans in terms of renewable capacity addition. You know, NTPC talks about maybe close to 6 gigawatt plus of annual capacity additions. Tata Park talks about, you know, anywhere between 3 to 4 gigawatt of annual capacity additions. Now, while these are targets, you will actually start seeing fructification of these targets into, uh, you know, visible plans as more tendering activity starts happening. And these are the set of companies which will start winning these kinds of products. Uh, the second point, uh, of course, is if we are going to see such a large quantum of renewable coming in, this needs a ramp up on the transmission connectivity infrastructure. So we're clear, clearly seeing a lot more capex uh, happening on the transmission side. CEA has already come up with their estimates of, uh, you know, closer to 2.4 lakh crores, which will be the capex that's spent between FI24 to FI30. So that's another space that's going to certainly see a lot of buildup. And lastly. Uh, thermal PLFs will uh, certainly start seeing an up move, at least in the near term, over the next two to three years, which is positive, again, across all uh, thermal companies. But if I drill down again, NTPC being the largest thermal power company in the country and having seen the benefit of efficiency gains whenever the PLFs have gone up. Uh, so we believe that you're clearly seeing a dual trigger from, from an NTPC perspective, thermal PLFs going up, 
leads to higher ROEs, more visible plans on the renewable space, certainly adds to your you know, growth visibility. And none of the uh, you know, option value of renewables is currently built into the stock price. NTPC, for example, uh, you know, trades at close to its FY25 uh, book value. Uh, at one time book and with no option value to the renewable, clearly a lot of upside there. All right, uh, Shubhadeep, uh, you know, we got your take on the past sector as well as NTPC, but IEX, you know, that stock yeah. is half from the top and a lot of retail audience says, hey, this is half from the top. Is it now presenting some value? But it seems, you know, I was going through your report and you believe that the street is factoring in the positives while ignoring some of those headwinds. What's your view yeah. on the stock at around 155 odd? It's bounced quite a bit from the recent lows. Uh, your take at around 150, 155 odd? Perfect. So, uh, yes, on IEX, we do have a brave heart reduce, as we call it. So it's probably a bit of a contra there. Uh, but I think uh, we are clearly backing this up with, you know, a lot of uh, data. And what we believe is you're seeing a structural change in terms of what's happening in the power markets. Uh, all the buyers of the power market and the entire system has been used, let's say, over the last five to seven years, we've been used to a low power price scenario, if I'm talking about, let's say, the last five years. Uh, so most of the discoms would be happy to go and buy power on IEX between two and a half to three rupees because that's probably the cheapest option out there. And that's the reason volumes were flowing in that direction, which is why we've seen probably, you know, the last five to seven years CAGR of 20% plus for IEX in terms of volume growth. And, and volumes is essentially what drives profitability for any exchange. Okay. Now, beginning, Fine. beginning FI20, let, let, I'll just complete my point. So beginning sure, sure, FI22 sure. and 23, what you would notice is uh, power prices have been spiking with rising power demand and sporadic deficits. And that has possibly what has led to the volumes also falling. So FY23, for example, you've seen close to a 5% dip in terms of uh, power volumes. And my sense is that, you know, going ahead, it's a structural change where you will potentially start seeing power volumes moving to longer term instruments, probably medium term contracts, bilateral contracts or other instruments rather than sticking to the spot market. And spot market is where IEX has, uh, you know, been the dominant player. Along with this, you also have the potential risk of market coupling, which can come in. And, and that essentially is a risk to IEX's moat of being the only reliable price determiner in the system. So when you put two and two together, the way we look at it is possibly the CMP, you know, is implying 20% plus CAGR between FI24 to FI30. Sure. Uh, whereas if you build in maybe uh, 15 to 16 percent CAGR and take a slightly more conservative uh, assumption, Got it. Uh, you start seeing Got the it. downside. Okay, Got fair it. enough. Uh, thanks a lot for that. In fact, it's seen enough of a downside, right? I mean, it's already down about 35 percent in the last 12 months alone. But appreciate your thoughts. Thanks a lot for joining in and speaking to CNBC TV 18. We have about.